was thinking because I completely forgot that the automatic page numbering was in this lecture <laughs> and it's the very next slide. So we're going to talk about text variables and inserting special characters in this lecture. We've already established the automation of design is important for efficiency. Being able to design and edit quickly is a key skill good designers possess. Time is money. Spending time performing menial tasks unnecessarily is a waste of time for you, for your employer, and for your client. Using text variables is another example of an InDesign feature that aids in the efficiency of design. A text variable is a placeholder inserted into a document that changes or varies depending on the content of its use or context of its use. Examples of text variables include automatic page numbering. You can use the current page number or even say uh, automate the next page number or the last page number. You can use running headers, chapter titles at the top of each page, file name, etc. Text variables and other type markers can be inserted via the type menu in InDesign. And you can see that in the screenshot here. You would use the type menu, text variables, and then insert variable. Examples include footnotes and endnotes for a long uh, body of text, hyperlinks and cross-references, chapter numbers, file creation dates, file names, image names, the last page number, modification date, output date, running header, bulleted and numbered list, special characters like symbols, markers, hyphens and dashes, quotation marks. Uh, you can have different types of quotation marks uh, depending on your needs. There's also spaces called white spaces, uh, M and N spacing. You can also have break characters like column breaks, frame breaks, page breaks. A lot of these are things that you would be used to using in like Microsoft Word, but you can also use them in InDesign when you get better at using InDesign for large bodies of text. So let's start with a few examples. One is footnotes and endnotes. Footnotes are notes placed at the bottom of a page in a document providing additional information about something within the text on that page. It is important for a footnote to be on the same page as the text it is referring to. For this reason, footnotes cannot be created manually. You can't just say, as you're typing something, see the bottom of this page and then create a box at the bottom. Uh, they must be created as part of an automated process so that if the text on the footnote is referring to somehow is moved from page 6 to let's say page 11, the footnote will also move automatically from page 6 to page 11. Endnotes are similar to footnotes, but instead of being at the bottom of a page within the body of text, the endnote appears at the very end of a document or a section of text, but it still needs to be automated because it will automatically tell you what page it's on. So if you were to just create notes at the end of a book, you don't want someone to have to go through and figure out if it's on page 306 or 219. Uh, so the endnotes need to be linked to the text as well. The steps necessary to insert footnotes or endnotes are the same, and you would identify where a footnote or an endnote is needed. Insert the text cursor at the end of the segment of the text the note will be associated with. With the text cursor blinking, choose the type menu, insert footnote, or type insert endnote, and then add the text you wish to be included in your note. Some facts and benefits of using automated notes in InDesign. Footnotes will appear at the bottom of your current text frame by default. InDesign will automatically create a new page and new text frame for endnotes, so you'll need to take this into consideration when planning the layout of your book. For example, making sure that your book has a multiple of four pages if you're trying to make sure that you have multiple of 16 pages because you want to make sure that you have 16 page signatures, you need to make sure that you end up with the right number of pages. Footnotes are linked to the text they are associated with independently of the location of the text, so if the text moves, the footnote will move with it. And note numbering automatically updates as new notes are added and old notes are removed. So if you added a note on page 11 and it was note 1, and then you added a note on page two. The note on page two would become note one because it's earlier in the book, and the one on page 11 would automatically become page uh, note number two. Modifying footnote and endnote options. So when you create a footnote or endnote, by default, it will just kind of look bland and plain, and that's okay. If you wanted to change it, you can modify it, and then you can automate the change of that so that all of the footnotes and all the endnotes update at once. 
Footnote and EndNote formatting can be adjusted via the Footnote Options and EndNote Options dialog boxes. Options include numbering style, so do you want the footnotes to be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, or I, 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 V. There's a couple different options on there. You can choose a paragraph style for the text formatting. You can add a line weight, type and color, etc. You can even add a rule across that separates your actual body copy from the end notes at the bottom. And you can see here that I changed mine to have a long horizontal blue rule. I changed the text to be blue so it stands out, etc. When you want to modify your EndNote options or your footnote options, you will choose type and document footnote options. I have the document footnote options selected because I'm modifying a footnote. Obviously, if you're going to modify an EndNote, you would choose document EndNote options. You can see the, the uh, footnote options and EndNote options dialog box. They have a lot of different options that you can click through and you can read and you can decide uh, what you want to change. I changed just a couple of things. I added a rule, so rule above the first line. Let's go back. I added a horizontal rule above the first line here that was thin and blue. So I changed it to be a one point or a half point, whatever I changed it to. And I changed the color to be the blue color. You can also link the formatting to a paragraph style. Now this requires you to know how to make a paragraph style, which we're going to talk about towards the end of this lecture. Uh, but once you create a paragraph style and you save it via the paragraph, style panel, uh, you can select it from the drop down menu and say all footnotes or all endnotes should link to this particular saved paragraph style setting. You can see that the endnote option is slightly different, but it still has a number of choices. You can choose how you want the numbering to be one, two, three, four. You can choose where it needs to start at and that kind of thing. Feel free to experiment and play around with this dialog box.